all right beautiful people how are you doing i hope you guys had a great week i had uh, i had a very very interesting week let's just say my week was interesting but i'm glad at least i you know this feeling that you have when you like put stuff down on paper and then you're able to take it off the box it's a very nice feeling so i was able to do that this week so i have a very very fun riddle for you guys i don't know if you liked my riddles last week I did like my riddles last week, but I have another fun um, riddle for you guys this week. The question is, what makes you young? What makes you young? And I know you guys are clever, so you're going to figure it out. Very quickly, how do we gather our news? Our news is gathered very randomly without any particular focus on any topic, be it political, business, technological, or cultural. We really just throw ourselves out there and try to find out what is happening for you guys. We gather news this way because we want to be as open to as many sources as possible and still be as balanced as possible. We read the stories directly from our sources so that their points of view are not changed. Our methodology is not perfect. And if you think we can improve on this, do let us know. For the meantime, we hope you enjoy today's episode. Who are these week's news sources? We have Africa News, All Africa, Guardian, Premium Times, Vanguard, Punch, Business Day, Food Safety Africa, Tech Point Africa, NIPC, and Business Insider Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, the Nigerian news in 30 minutes. First off, Nigeria's treasure. Wow. First off, Nigeria's treasury chief is arrested over multi-million dollar fraud. The head of Nigeria's treasury has been arrested for an alleged involvement in fraud and money laundering worth 80 billion naira, the National Anti-Graft Agency said. Ahmed Idris, Nigeria's accountant general, was arrested on Monday after failing to honor invitations to respond to the allegations the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, said in a statement released on Monday evening. He is currently facing charges of fraud and money laundering. According to the EFCC, Idris extracted funds through fake consultancy firms and other illegal activities using agents, family members, and some close associates. These funds, according to the commission, were then invested by Idris in real estate in Abuja, the capital, and in his home state of Kanu in northern Nigeria. Ahmed Idris did not comment on the accusations. Meanwhile, Nigerian airlines suspend plans to ground local flights. Nigerian airlines have suspended plans to ground domestic flights due to soaring fuel prices, the Association of Nigerian Airlines, AON, has announced. The AON arrived at this decision after receiving numerous calls from the highest levels of government promising urgent intervention, part of the statement on Sunday read. The AON had initially announced on Friday the suspension of domestic flights on Monday until further notice due to the surge in the price of Jet A1 paraffin, whose price per litre has almost quadrupled. In the interest of the national economy, the AON informs the general public that the previously announced cessation of operations on the 9th of May is suspended pending a successful engagement with the government, it said. Since Russia invaded Ukraine in late February and imposed sa sanctions on Moscow, world oil prices have soared, causing fuel prices to soar in many countries. Nigeria's aviation sector has been hit hard by the price hike, leading several unions in the sector to go on strike on Monday to demand a minimum wage increase. The threats to suspend all domestic flights had provoked a flurry of reactions, with the authorities calling on the AON to consider the multiplier effect of stopping their operations on Nigerians and travelers worldwide. In March this year, several domestic flights in Nigeria were reported to have been delayed and others canceled due to lack of jet fuel. The Nigerian Consumer Protection Commission 
said it was seeking to find an acceptable arrangement with the major fuel marketers. Over in the north, a mob burn, burns students to death for blasphemy in Sokoto State. A mob has killed a Christian female student of Shehu Shagari College of Education in Wamako, Sokoto State. The deceased, identified only as Miss Deborah, was accused of passing on flattering comments about Prophet Muhammad on campus. Following immediate threats to her safety, she was immediately evacuated to the security post of the school where the mob took her from the personnel. A video of the deceased being beaten and hit with sticks and subsequently burnt to death has since gone viral. Kano State Commissioner of Information, Isa Bajini Galadanchi, said Governor Aminu Waziri Tambuwal has ordered that the school be shut and directed the Ministry of Higher Education and relevant security agencies to investigate the matter. The governor has called on the people of the state to remain calm and maintain peace as the government would take appropriate actions on the findings of the investigation. Meanwhile, in the north, death toll in a blast near a school in Nigeria's Kano state rises. The authorities say at least nine people have been killed in an explosion near a primary school in the northern city of Kano on the 17th of May, 2022. Many people were injured, including young school children. Part of the school's roof was blown off. Police are still investigating the cause of the blast, but initial reports suggest it was caused by a gas cylinder in a wielding shop. News of the blast caused tension and panic in the community as parents rushed to schools to withdraw their children. Up next, strike. Again, soldiers attack protesting Nigerian students. For the second time in one week, students protesting the continued shutdown of Nigerian universities were on Tuesday reportedly attacked by soldiers in Ondo State. The students who had blocked the busy Akure Ilesha Road for the second day said without being provoked, the soldiers visited the protest ground and forcefully dispersed the protesters even as they shot sporadically. Some unidentified soldiers had also on Friday forcefully driven through a crowd of protesting students in Ibado, the Oyo state capital. Up next, 2023, APC shifts presidential, gubernatorial and national assembly primaries. Following its inability to get the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to adjust the 2023 general election timetable, the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, has reviewed its own primary election timetable. The decision was taken at Wednesday's meeting of the Abdullahi Adamu-led National Working Committee, NWC, of the party. Confirming the development, National Publicity Secretary of the party, Barrister Felix Morka, said the earlier three-day presidential convention would now be held for two days from Sunday the 29th to Monday 30th of May. The party, however, shifted forward its governorship and House of Representatives primary elections. The exercise will now be held on Thursday, the 26th of May. Also, the Senate and the House of Assembly primary elections will be held on Friday, the 27th of May. Up next, the Hausa com community seeks a reversal of the Okada ban promises Sanwolu massive votes. This will be interesting. Some leaders of the Hausa community in Lagos state have appealed to Governor Babajide Sanwolu to reverse the ban on Okada operations in six local government areas of the state. The leaders who spoke in separate interviews with The Punch on Wednesday said, Okada riders who hail from Northern Nigeria contribute significantly to the voting population of Lagos and should not be economically strangulated. 
Sawolu had on Wednesday banned the operations of commercial motorcycle riders in six local governments and nine local government development areas in the state. The affected councils are Ikeja, Surulere, Lagos Island, Lagos Mainland, and Apapa, amongst others. The governor said we will not sit back and watch criminally minded people use that mode of transportation, that's the motorcycles, to perpetrate crimes and criminality in Lagos. Lives are being lost on a daily basis. Preventable accidents are happening every day and the riders are not respecting any of our traffic laws. The situation has led to a complete breakdown of law and order. This ban has come to stay and we will not tolerate any weakness in enforcement. But the Seriki of Obalende, Saliu Waziri, told the punch that the government should rethink its decision. Waziri said the government should instead get the data of Okada riders in Lagos to fish out any intruder or criminally minded fellows. Up next, shops raised, vehicles destroyed as Okada riders and Abuja traders clash. There was tension at the Day Day area of the Federal Capital Territory on Wednesday over the death of a yet to be identified woman. A correspondent from Punch newspapers learned that the death of the woman, said to be of Igbo extraction, snowballed into a clash between Hausa commercial motorcyclists and Igbo building material dealers in the area. Punch Metro gathered that many vehicles were destroyed during the crisis as bonfires made by rioters on the Zuba Expressway obstructed vehicular movement in the area for hours. One of Punch's correspondents observed that business activities in the community were paralyzed due to the clash. As of the time of leaving the area around 5 p.m., the atmosphere was still tense despite the presence of military personnel, police officers, men of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, and vigilantes. A trader who identified himself simply as Ukechuku said his shop was among many set ablaze during the fracas. He said around 2 p.m., an Okada man carried an Igbo woman. On their way to the market, an accident happened and the woman died. Nothing happened to the rider. Unfortunately, the Igbo were there. They challenged the, uh, the Okada rider, asking why the woman would die there. From there, a riot broke out and a lot of vehicles were damaged and people injured. They went to the Igbo market to scatter the market. They burned some of the shops and they are currently calling on the government to help as they don't know the direction things will go right now. A commercial motorcyclist who spoke in Hausa blamed the riot on the Igbo traders in the market. He said that there was a timber shed and an Okada man was riding with an Igbo lady on his Okada. A driver knocked them down and the lady died. So when the Igbo came and saw that the lady was dead, they began to go after Hausa Okada riders, which was what led to the crisis. A resident who gave his name as Silas told Punch correspondent that the incident obstructed vehicular movements for hours before security operatives restored normalcy in the area. Silas said it all began when the Igbo questioned the death of the woman and were asking what to do about the situation. Then the Hausa came out and started saying they couldn't really do anything about it and that the woman was dead already. This father infuriated the Igbo and they started exchanging words. They burnt tires on the road, damaged cars, and also obstructed vehicular movements. The Federal Capital Territory Police Public Relations Officer, Josephine Ade, said order had been restored to the market. I mean, this is very interesting because both sides are pushing the blame, you know, and when these kind of things happen in such areas, because of the ethnicity, eventually it spirals into a lot of things. So it's something to be very careful about. If you live around this area, you will need to be very, very, very security conscious in these times. Up next, 
Total Energies appoints bank to lead sale of stake in Nigerian oil joint venture. Total Energies has finally launched the sale of its 10% stake in Nigerian joint venture, SPDC, with Canada's Scotia Bank leading the sale as financial advisor. A sale document tendering for interest showed, reports Reuters. Total Energies announced the sale in late April. Scotia Bank declined to comment. Total Energies also declined to comment on the financial advisor. Total Energies confirmed it was selling its interest in 13 onshore fields and three in shallow water, producing over 20,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day. The sale includes infrastructure such as 3,500 kilometers of pipelines connecting to two key crude export terminals, Boni and Focados. The French company will keep oil mining licenses 23 and 28 and its interest in the associated gas pipeline network that feeds Nigeria LNG. Big oil companies have been progressively exiting Nigeria's onshore production due to years of sabotage and theft that have degraded assets across the oil-rich Delta region. SPDC is a joint venture in which Shell holds a 30% working interest, NNPC holds 55%, and NE has 5%. Shell is also selling its stake in SPDC, but these efforts have been held up by a court case. Meanwhile, NAFDAQ cautions Nigerians against addition of chemicals to food. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAQ, has warned Nigerians to desist from adding chemicals to food for whatever reasons, something it has continually reiterated. The warning was in response to alleged mixing of chemicals like Jatropha Kirkus leaves, hypo detergent and potash with aku, popularly known as fufu, to make it rise, be soft and hasten the fermentation process. News Agency of Nigeria reports that such practice was allegedly done in some parts of Ondo and Ikiti states, especially in the popular fufu market at Oke-Lisa Street, adjacent A division in Akure. The NAFTAC Director General, Professor Mujisola Adeyeye, said that the agency was aware of the alleged practice and warned those indulging in the act to desist. Apparently, 95% of traders add these chemicals to fufu for economical gains, disregarding the health impacts to consumers. You guys will really have to be careful out there with what you are consuming. Up next, Jumia's first quarter of 2022 report. Jumia, the Pan-African e-commerce company, announced its first quarter financial results on Tuesday, May the 17th, 2022. The report shows that Jumia experienced significant growth in orders, gross merchandise value, and revenue. In other words, Orders increased by 40% year on year from 6.6 .6 million to 9.3 million. GMV increased by 27% year on year from 198.9 million US dollars to 252.7 million US dollars. And Jumia's revenue reached $47.6 million. That's an increase of 44% from $33 million in the first quarter of 2021. However, these figures fell far short of where the e-commerce giant ended in 2021, with the last quarter recording GMV sales of $330 million, a revenue of $62 million, and orders of $11.3 million. Despite continued global supply chain volatility for these categories, 
Food delivery grew by 86% year over year, while phones and electronics grew 19%. Other negatives include its first quarter of 2022 adjusted earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization loss at $53 million, up by 70% year on year. Up next, in Lagos Free Zone, partners sign 10 billion Naira gas deal. The Lagos Free Zone has signed a gas contract over 10 billion Naira with Falcon Corporation ND, Western and FHN Consortium. The gas infrastructure development agreement was signed in Lagos on Monday. The project allows the consortium of Falcon Corporation, ND Western Midstream Limited, and FHN Gas Limited to exclusively build, own, and operate a natural gas distribution infrastructure network within the LFZ. To actualize the opportunity, the consortium said it would incorporate a special purpose vehicle, SPV. That's Optimera Energy LFZ Enterprise within the LFZ. Meanwhile, JP Morgan has removed Nigeria from its list of emerging market recommendations that investors should be overweight in. JP Morgan has removed Nigeria from its list of emerging market sovereign recommendations that investors should be quote and unquote, overweight in, saying the country has not taken advantage of high oil prices. Analysts use overweight and underweight to broadcast recommendations on buying or avoiding stocks of certain sectors. Analysts attach an overweight recommendation to a stock that they believe will outperform its sector in the near future. Now, according to Reuters, the bank analyst said Nigeria's national oil company, NNPC, did not transfer any revenue to the government from January to March this year due to petrol subsidies and low oil production. The bank further added that it moved Nigeria out of the overweight category due to its fiscal woes amid a worsening global risk backdrop that has raised market concern despite a positive oil environment. On the other hand, JP Morgan replaced Nigeria in the list with Serbia and Uzbekistan in the overweight category. According to Reuters, JP Morgan included Serbia in the category due to the country's high reserves and a fiscally cautious government. At the same time, Uzbekistan was added to the category due to the country's relatively low debt, despite Russian exposure. The bank analysts also revealed that the emerging markets bond index global diversified index had dropped by 16% this year, with most of the losses having come from rates and $4 billion in net outflows from emerging markets since mid-April. They noted that risky sovereign yields were now 10.6%, the highest level since the first wave of the coronavirus pandemic in April 2020, thus reducing market access and increasing the risk of debt defaults. Up next, and if you eat a lot of rises by 35% in one year, I mean, I'm a student and bread is a lifesaver. So if the price of bread is rising, that's, that's something to be, you know, it's intriguing. Anyway, the price of sliced 500 gram bread rose to 447.8 Naira in March this year from 331.76 Naira in March 2021, according to data obtained from the National Bureau of Statistics. The NBS report also showed that the price of unsliced 500 gram bread 
increased to 411.73 Naira in March 2022 from 310.73 Naira in March 2021. Bread is mostly made from wheat. According to the NBS, Nigeria imported 124 billion Naira worth of wheat from Russia in the first nine months of 2021. Since the Russia-Ukraine war, prices of commodities have surged. The price of wheat flour, pre-packed, that's golden penny, 2 kg, jumped by 36% to 1,041.82 Naira in March 2022 from 766.11 Naira. Wow in March 2021. That's a very wide margin. In one year, wheat-based products such as the popular pre-packed wheat flour and bread, both sliced and unsliced, have seen steady price increase across Nigeria. The NBS disclosed on Monday that food inflation increased to 18.37% in April 2022 from 17. 2 Naira in March 2022. The rise in the food index was caused by increases in the prices of bread and cereals, food products like potatoes, yam, and other tubers, wine, fish, meat, and oils, it said. So if you are a bread lover, you might want to start looking for an alternative because it's not getting any easier. So I asked you guys a very interesting riddle at the beginning of this news segment. And the riddle was, what makes you young? So the answer is adding the letters NG. You get it like you, then you add NG and then it becomes young. Ha! I bet you didn't get it right. I won this round, exactly. Anyway, that rounds up the news for this week. I remain Emidiong Udo and I will see you lovely people next week.